Number five, indicate the most important types of intermolecular attractions in each of the following solutions. And then we have methanol, which is CH3OH liquid in water, which is H2O. Okay, so in order to find out what the intermolecular attractions are, intermolecular means what the attractions are between two different molecules or compounds, the first thing is we got to figure out what type of compounds these are. But if I look on the periodic table, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and hydrogen again, hydrogen again, oxygen, right? These are all nonmetals. So methanol and water are both covalent compounds. So um, to easily see what's going on as far as intermolecular attractions, I would highly recommend drawing the Lewis structure. That's what I'm going to do for learning purposes here. But as you get better with understanding and identifying how to uh, see the Lewis structures, you could do those in your head, and then you'll be able to find out the answer much quicker. But I'm just going to draw the Lewis structure here. Now for practice, you can pause the video and see if your Lewis structure matches mine. Um, there's tons of Lewis structure uh, questions on the channel at the moment. Um, so if you need more help with drawing Lewis structures, you could always go there, but this is going to kind of be like a quick inversion. So methanol, CH3, uh, OH, would have a carbon bound to the three hydrogens and then bound to the oxygen and then the other hydrogen. All of these are single bonds. So single, 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 and the oxygen has the two lone pairs. As opposed to the water, has just the oxygen bound with the two hydrogens. It does not matter what angles you draw the... Um, the covalent molecules here, doesn't matter. Um, but that's what we get. Now, the next thing is we have to identify whether these are polar or nonpolar molecules. And the easiest way to do this is to just remember SNAP, S-N-A-P. Remember, N stands for nonpolar, and the P stands for polar. The S and the N go together, and the A and the P go together. If your molecule as a whole is symmetrical, it's classified as being nonpolar. But if your molecule is at least one point of being asymmetrical, that's a polar molecule. Remember, asymmetrical means different. So if I cut methanol right down the middle, this is clearly not the same. I have a CH3 on the left and the OH on the right. That's asymmetrical. So this would be a polar molecule. And the same thing with water. Now, if you break it up like this, there is your asymmetrical you know, point of it. I have the lone electrons on the top and the H's on the bottom. They can't cancel out. So this would also be polar. And water is always polar. It's much easier to just remember that fact because you'll see this time and time again, not only in chemistry, but biology, biochem. So water is always a polar substance. Now, from these, we can list out all the intermolecular forces that these polar molecules have. So always start with the weakest and go to the strongest, right? The weakest is always the one that everybody has, no matter whether it's polar or nonpolar. These are your dispersion forces. So just because these molecules exist, they will have dispersion forces. The next level up is your dipole-dipole force, and only polar molecules have dipole-dipole attractions. And since both of these have, uh, both of them are polar, they both will have the dipole-dipole attractions. So dipole-dipole, we could say force or attraction, doesn't really matter. Dipole-dipole force. Okay. And now the last one. The strongest one, if these have it, is the hydrogen bonding. Don't forget about that hydrogen bonding. And remember, hydrogen bonding only happens between OH, NH, or FH molecules, or bonds in the molecule. And specifically, we have an OH bond right here. So this one can potentially have hydrogen bonding. Okay. And water has two OHs or HO bonds. So this one also can have 
or exhibit hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding. Now, since these are two different molecules, you have to pick the most, uh, the highest force that they have in common. And remember, the way that we listed this out was we went from weakest to strongest. So the strongest force that methanol can exhibit is hydrogen bonding because of that OH. And the strongest force that water can exhibit is also hydrogen bonding. So since they both can hydrogen bond, the most important type, aka the strongest, that's basically what this means. The strongest intermolecular attraction between methanol and water is that hydrogen bonding because they both can exhibit that because they both have the, um, the OH bond. And that is it. Let's color it in. Woo woo. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I'm a little bit under the weather. I hope, uh, I hope you don't really hear it in my voice, but I do. <laughs> um, but yeah, but we got to keep doing videos. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for uh, viewing the video. If you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps the channel out tremendously. It just gets the word out there that this channel exists. Thank you so much, and I hope you're doing well. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.